Question, how does McCain get from where he is on that map to winning the presidency in just 48 hours? Well, I think we've seen a significant shift in uh, where the polling data is over the last 10 days. In fact, I would say uh, the Southwest and Colorado are really moving into McCain columns. I mean, we've seen a huge movement in Colorado, New Mexico, and Nevada toward McCain. In fact, I would say probably today the race is even structurally in those three states. So if you take that and then move east, uh, we are still very competitive and expect to win Florida. But I think the most important state to watch right now is Pennsylvania. It's a state that Republicans haven't won in a long time, and we're doing great there. In fact, some new polls out recently uh, show the margin of error is uh, the only thing that separates us from Barack Obama. Well, let's take a look at uh, the, the real clear politics average of a number of those state polls uh, and, and see what they show. First of all, let's put up Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania has 21 electoral votes and Obama currently leads, according to this, to this average of recent public polls, by seven and a half points. Uh, let's put up the state of Ohio. Uh, no Republican ha has been elected without winning Ohio. Ohio, 20 electoral votes. Obama up by 5.6 votes. Those are big leads to overcome, Rick, in the final weekend of the campaign. Well, of course, those are the averages of many polls over the last uh, week to 10 days. And you'll see that Mason Dixon yesterday showed surveys showing us up in Ohio and uh, within the margin of error in, in Pennsylvania. Look, this, this election is moving very quickly. There's no doubt that John McCain is increasing his, his margins in almost every state in the country right now. And I think that what we're in for is a slam bang finish. I mean, it's going to be wild. Uh, I think that we are able to close this campaign. John McCain may be the greatest closer politician of all time. He's been counted out before and won these kinds of states, and we're in the process of winning them right now. I can understand whether it's the truth or whether it's spin that that's the argument that you would have to make in the final days of the campaign. But, but I'm, I'm trying to understand because you're saying one thing in the Obama camp and frankly some of the numbers are saying something different. The latest Gallup poll continues to have Obama with a double digit lead with his uh, advantage actually increasing. Well, let's, let's talk about, let's talk about well, that well, Gallup poll. I think Rick, it's a good Rick, example. Rick, because I'm not, Rick, I'm not sure. David Axelrod. Please yeah. don't interrupt. Oh. Uh, uh, but <laughs> but uh, you know it has the, the lead increasing and also you've got the Obama camp now saying that some other new red states are moving their way. They've actually started advertising in North Dakota and Georgia and even in McCain's home state of Arizona. Well, first of all, they really aren't advertising there. They've just done that to uh, express a little bit of interest in the media, and they've done a good job. I mean, this is the greatest manipulative campaign in the, in the history of American politics. Uh, we'll see who's going to win those three states. But let me just talk about this Gallup poll. Structurally, the Gallup poll is way out of whack with the rest of the country. You know, the rest of the country, uh, there's no difference between about five points between the Republican Party and the Democratic Party as far as voter ID. And the Gallup poll has it in the teens. It's never in, in, in almost the history of American politics. Lincoln been that far apart. So I think that, look, the, the poll game is a great game to play. I think it's very exciting to play the poll game. I have a lot of people in our campaign who love polls. But the bottom line is every legitimate poll that has the structure of this race in and aware the country has been historically has this race closing. It has John McCain on the uptick. It has Barack Obama on the downtick. Almost every one of these polls show him now below 50 percent, whether in the states or nationally. And by the way, there have only been three Democrats in our time that have been able to win an election with a plurality, and that was FDR during the Depression, uh, LBJ uh, after the Kennedy assassination, and guess what? Jimmy Carter. And you know what he was able to accomplish? 50.1%. Now, sure, that's good enough for a win. I think that's going to be John McCain and more. Hey, you know, it's not just a question of the polls, though. Because of this extraordinary early voting, we can already begin to talk about actual votes having been cast and the turnout. Estimates are that somewhere right. between 30 and 40 percent of the actual turnout, total turnout in this election, has already voted early. And I want to focus on one key state. Uh, in North Carolina, more than two million people have already voted. And we don't know who they voted for, but we know that registered Democrats vastly outnumber the uh, the number of Republicans, 53 percent to 30 percent. Hasn't Obama, Rick, already banked a big lead in a number of these states in early voting? 
Well, I think uh, North Carolina is a really good example for you to use because if you'll notice too in the survey data, if you take out all the early voting people, John McCain is over 50% in that state. So uh, I would rather have over 50% of the 70% to the left to vote than 50% of the 30 that's already voted. What's also interesting about North Carolina is structurally uh, the early voting really isn't any different uh, than it was in 2004. And in order for Barack Obama to win, he has to structurally change the way this race works. He has to have new people who have never been involved in this process vote. And what's really happening here is the patterns that are followed in the past are being followed in this election. And that's good for John McCain. Well, we're going to talk to David Pluff in a moment. You're saying that there's not going to be an increase in African-American voters and first-time voters and young voters? Well, look at the data between the uh, early voting and the uh, absentee balloting. There's no structural change than what the election was in 2004. Now, understand, 2004 was a historic turnout at that point in time. So it's a, it's a high bar to get over. But the reality is, sure, there'll be more people voting, but there won't be more people of any one particular organization. All right. You announced on Friday that in the final 10 days of this campaign, McCain is actually going to outspend Obama by $10 million of advertising. That's the good news. Uh, the bad news is that you've had to take some of that money out of your get out the vote operation. It, it would seem to an outsider that that's, that would indicate that you have not true, Chris. Well, those were what the reports yeah. were. This is not true. Well, the reports are incorrect. We are spending over $300 million in 60 days to win this election. And in fact, the truth of it is we've actually increased our get out the vote activity to almost $100 million in the 60 days. We're making more calls than has ever been made. In fact, a year ago this week, or four years ago this week, the uh, Bush campaign, which had probably the state-of-the-art 72-hour program, made 1.9 million calls in one week. We've exceeded 5 million calls this week alone. In fact, yesterday was almost a million calls in one day, and calls and, and door knocks. So believe me, we have not spared any expense at getting the vote out for this election, and it's just not true that we're sacrificing anything to win. So I, I just want to make clear, uh, you are not taking money out of the get out the vote operation in this final week or 10 days to put it uh, into uh, more television advertising. Correct. We have, in fact, increased uh, all along the month of October how much money we've put into the Get Out the Vote program, and we've been able to increase the amount of money that has gone into advertising over at the RNC because they've been raising so much money. We've had a historic month in October for fundraising and a historic month in September for fundraising at the RNC.